Hi guys, so this is a different video today. Um, Steph is making pizza dough and we're actually going to freeze it because we're not eating it today. Um, but uh, he can show you and explain um, what he does with it. So we'll have to add a few videos together because it's a good idea to make the dough in the morning. Is that correct, Steffi? Yes. And then you let it rise and then something else happens. And then, and then you let it rise until the evening, until you're ready to cook it. So we'll, we'll video the various stages. So what you need is um, a kilo, and you'll have to translate that to pounds if you're in the States. Um, a kilo of flour. Now, you need the type zero of the Italian flour for pizza. Um, that's very important, not zero, zero, or one, or whatever. You need zero. You need salt, a pinch of salt. You need about 600 mils of water and you need um, uh, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil and um, about 10 grams of yeast. Now in Italy we use fresh yeast um, but if, you, if you're in Australia it's quite hard to find. I don't know about the States and the UK and France and that sort of other countries. Um, you can use the yeast for bread or pizza, I don't know, the, dr the dry yeast. What do you use in Australia? How much of that do you use? Do you remember? Always uh, the same amount. Uh, oh, if it's the dry yeah, yeast. So grams. if it's the dry yeast, you use about 10 grams of it. Now, we don't use too much yeast because um, if you put too much yeast in the pizza, it's quite the, the base becomes quite hard, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it becomes quite hard and it's quite hard to digest. So we only use about 10 grams. So you can cut and that if this you is, this, These quantities are for four people. Oh, yeah. The quantity that... So one kilo of flour, 600 mils of water, about 60 uh, mLs of oil, of olive oil, 15 grams of salt and 10 grams of yeast is for about four people, okay? All right, Steffi, do you want to cut that? So let me see if this is 10 grams. It's nine grams, that'll nine do. Gram. Okay. Okay, so so, so um, then what do you do, Steffi? Then I put a bit of water in a cup. Oh, just a minute, we do it on here. So put some water in there. Um, it's about, so this is a teacup, it's about half full. And so then he gets the yeast and, and it's just like room temperature water. Yeah, room temperature water. Like not cold, not, not hot. And then he just smushes it around. Then we can use it on a spoon. So Steph has been studying how to make pizza ever since I met him. Isn't that right, Steffi? Yeah. I used to work in a bar um, near our house and the, the lady there used to do lunch for the offices around us and she used to make pizza and so she gave Steffi her recipe and um, he's been trying to figure out the best um, dough for a long time. I think one of the biggest helps was not too long ago when we met that pizza yeah. man at a dinner. Do you remember? And yeah, he, yeah, he told yeah. you to use less yeast. Yeah. He was the one that said less ye yeast is better. And also, um, it's very important to make your dough you know, at least, what, minimum five hours before, yeah. right? Minimum. Yeah. Like if you make it the night before for the next day, it's even better. You because the, le the less um, time it has to, um, to rise and to do its job, um, then the, the harder the pizza is to digest as well. Because yeah, yeah. your cousin made it and we weren't very well in the night. No. And we ate, she'd only um, risen it for like two hours, not even, before she cooked it. So um, it's very important to do it before. Okay, so that you can see here, this is the, the yeast and, and water. Now, oh, just a disclaimer, of course, this is not a cooking channel. Um, this is a crafty channel, but um, several of you asked for Steffi's pizza recipe. So now... We put the kilo of flour. So you're putting all of it? All of it. I actually never watched Steffi make the pizza. It's too hard for me. It's a very hard job. You need to keep a, a bit apart if you need more. Oh, we have another bag of, um, of flour. So if you don't have um, more flour, um, keep, keep a little bit 
just a little bit on the side because you'll need that when you're kneading the dough. You'll need a little bit of flour. So I should pull out the other packet. Yeah. Next things we are doing, we put the... What are you doing now? The dope. Not the dope. He always calls the dough the dope. It's yeast. The yeast. Oh, you put all of it. Okay. All of it. Yeah. What did you need all that water for then? You need that after, do you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You might get some dumb questions from me because I don't oh. watch you do this. Okay. Now, show the quantity of water has to be perfect. So as to be, we said... 600 ml. 600 ml. You've only, how much have you got there? Put a bit more. Which is old liquid? Yeah. You've only got 500 there. Yeah. So you need 600 mLs, guys. I don't know what that is in other countries' measurements. You'll have to look on Google, Google it. Okay. And you're watching now, what Steffi's doing? Now you can start adding the water. Not all in a row, a bit of a time. A Go. bit. Like that. Is that enough? More? Continue. Should I stop? More. More. Quite often you will need an assistant. Lulu usually helps Steffi do this. More. You tell me when. Go. More. Okay, now we are at the point. Another, another, another bit. Another water. bit? Stop. That's so it. I haven't put all, I've got a hundred mil still left here. We okay. haven't put it all in Now yet. you need to get the olive oil. You need the 60 mils. 60 mils. Let me just get a, measure, a measurement thing. 60 mils. Quarter, 60 mils is four, a quarter of a cup, Maybe guys. put a bit less. 60 mils, See. quarter of a cup. So I'll, I'll put a bit less. I'll show you my less. It's a tiny bit. That, like okay. that? That's okay. a bit less. Yep. There we go. Can you Let's see it. that, guys? All of it? No, not before the salt. How much salt? 10, 15 grams of salt. Let me just see if I've got a bit here for that. Oh, there's still meals. Well, what would that be? Quarter of a teaspoon? Half a teaspoon? A teaspoon? Yeah. A teaspoon, do you think? Yeah. Probably a teaspoon. We'll put a teaspoon of salt. Like that much? Yeah, but turn it around. Give you. Oh, you have to... Guys, I get into trouble because I just dump it. He likes it to be spread around. Maybe another bit. A bit of what? Salt. Well, you've got it in your hand. Another bit. You want more? Yeah. So a bit more than a teaspoon. Okay. Qu one and a quarter. Okay, now you can start with more water. More water. So we had 100 ml still. To have the best consistency, Cons yeah. you need to have the right amount of everything. Otherwise, it doesn't get good. It gets mushy. <laughs> <laughs> Now continue. More water? More water. That's it. So I have to tell Tom because he wanted this recipe. Oh, you lost a bit. It's a messy job. That's why I don't like doing it. No, What's next? Perfect. Olive oil. Oh, you don't need any more water? So guys, um, 50 ml are left Because I put a bit of water. water with the yeast, so that's why this is enough. Oh, so 600 ml is... Oh, I see, some of the water went in the yeast. Okay, so yeah, about 600 ml is about right. So I haven't put all... Look, I've only put this much in. It's only half of it. We'll see how we go. Continue. More? Yeah. It smells good. I'm smelling the olive oil. You're moving off screen. Hop on screen. 
Here, I want to do a Rachel go off screen. What? More? All of it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Do you want me to get that off your fingers? Yeah. So this is what you need an assistant for. I better stop interfering, huh? can kind of get an idea of the consistency there. So how long do you do that till you can see yeah. all the oils mixed in? Yeah. Then you can put that, you can do this job now in a board like this. Yep. Oh, that's nice. And then what happens? Then, when you've done this, you can leave it for 10 minutes and then need the glass like that. Okay, leave so it we'll, rest for 10 minutes. We'll, leave, we'll be back in 10 minutes then. So we're back and 10 minutes have gone by and uh, Steph has opened another packet of flour. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see the shine here, it's a bit um, wet. So you need a bit of flour, you just sprinkle a little bit over because you don't want it all to stick to your hands. And what are you doing here, Steffi? I'm taking it out from there. So if you have a wood surface or a marble surface, that's the best to make it on, right, Steffi? Yeah. Even marble is good. Yeah. And he's got this, can I show that? He's got this little um, thin thing that's made especially for this sort of work, is to you scrape it off the board. And see how it looks good. Get more on the screen. So he's just get making it into sort of like a round, so, roundish sort okay. of shape. It looks like a piece of bread. That's okay. Then, when you did that, you fold it enough like this. Okay. It's quite elastic, isn't it, Steffi? Yeah. It's soft but elastic. And we put it back in here. Put it in the bowl. Back in the bowl. And then we close. This is very important. You need to close the bowl with cling wrap. There needs to be no air um, getting into the bowl because otherwise the dough will get a crust. Yes. It'll form a crust on top. You might need, do you need to put two? Yeah. Let's see. Lulu knows she usually helps her dad. There we go, that's closed. So it's closed, it's like a drum. And then what happens, Steffi? Then you leave it for about six, seven hours. Six, even, six. even four hours, whatever. When it starts to grow, you have to put it in a dark, place with a mat on top so put like a tea towel a tea towel you mean not a mat a wet one no 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 oh, i thought you put it oh he one. used to do that now he does it with clean wrap oh, so okay. you get a tea towel a clean tea towel and you cover it and we normally just put it sort of near the heater but you don't want to have it on heat you just want to put it somewhere warm so if you've got a warm terrace Steffi sometimes not, put, in the, not in light in dark in the dark so sometimes Steffi puts it under the doona in the bed in the bedroom in the bed yes Lily's looking at me he used to do that we used to have dough in the bed um but so you don't want to do that because it can overflow does overflow sometimes yeah. okay so we'll be back in about six or seven hours even four hours when it grows up. When it grows. We'll be back when it grows and we'll tell you how long it was. Okay, so we'll see you soon. Okay, Hi. so we're back. It's been about four hours and this is our dough. So before it was down here, 
and it's raised up to here. So this, what's next, Steffi? Next, we have to do, we have to turn it around, move it. Now you see the movement I'm gonna do, and then we're gonna leave it for other four hours, and then it's gonna be ready. Okay, so you're kind of breaking it up, moving it, and then letting it re yeah. rise. So you get a little bit of flour, he's getting a little bit of flour and just sprinkling it over the top. And you see, look, there's a lot of air in there. So you separate it from the, and see how it's, it, it, he's knocked the air out of it. So he's removed it from the edges and you, what are you going to just flip it about? Yeah. Are you going to put it on the bench? Yeah, now what I do, you know, I try to put all the bubbles out. So okay. bit like before. Yeah. And the flour is just so it doesn't stick, obviously. We all know that even if we don't make pizza. Looks beautiful. <laughs> Does it feel different to before? Does it feel like yeah, more? it's really soft. It's softer now. Okay, so Before we do it was elastic and hard, now it's soft and elastic. The same movement. And we're gonna put it here. Now you can even leave it for two hours, whatever. Yes, to grow up again. Okay. When it grows up, it's done. It's More done. you leave it doing, better it is. Okay, go. You gotta pull it on your side. That's it. Oops. Oh, you got too much over there. There we go. So we've sealed that up again and it's going to go back under the, um, what do you call it, the tea towel yeah. and in, in, a a dark, dark. in a dark spot again okay. for another two or three hours or four hours, depends. Okay, so we'll be back again soon. Okay, Bye. So we're back. About another two hours have gone by and as you can see, the dough, not the dope, the dough mm -hmm. has risen back to the surface of level to the top of the bowl. So now Steph is going to show you the next step. So what? we did a kilo of flour. So with a kilo, you do four pizza, okay? So at this point, what I will do, I will divide this in four. And then, okay. So we try to do all even parts. So you're cutting it in half. And then in half again. Okay, one, two. Okay. Now what I will do, I have to do little balls <laughs> like this. Okay. You have to do this movement. Yeah, one, okay. Two. Okay. Aren't they pretty? Okay, one is bigger, whatever. Now we have to put a towel. What on do top. I always say? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, that's okay. You have to lie them for other 30 seconds, 30, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. minutes. And then they will be ready to do pizza. To make the pizza. To make the pizza. Okay. So we'll be back in 30 minutes when it's time to make the pizza. So 30 minutes, just cover them, leave them there for 30 minutes. Okay.
We'll be back soon. Okay. Bye. I'm having a conniption. I'm starting the video again because husband is interfering with the equipment. Don't touch the equipment. Okay, so I'll start again. We have our four balls of dough. Um, so at this point, if you wanted to freeze the dough, you would wrap it in each individual one very well in cellophane or cling wrap and then put them in the freezer. And then when you want to, um, the day that you want to eat the pizza, you would take them out in the morning to thaw out. And then uh, in the afternoon, when you're ready to cook, in the, e in the afternoon, say a couple of hours before you're going to cook, what do you do, Steffi? I make a ball again. You take them out, put a little bit of flour on them and, and yep. do the yep. ball yep. action again. And uh, you leave it. Up. And and you put the um, the tea towels over the top and just let them sit until you're ready to cook. Now the next most important when you're ready to start cooking, the most important thing is put your oven on at the highest temperature. It has to be super hot. Okay, so get that on straight away, and then go and prepare whatever toppings you want to put on your pizza. In Italy, we do not eat ham and pineapple pineapple pizzas. Italians are horrified at the thought of a ham and pineapple pizza. So what we like to eat is um, we have thinly sliced eggplant or aubergine, um, black olives that have been pitted, fresh tomatoes, if it's in, these ones are pretty good because it's been quite warm here, um, except today's cold. Um, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, this is red capsicum or red pepper and thinly sliced onion. We also like to put on hot salami. So this is hot salami here. And then, what are you doing? Oh, you want to show it. He wants, that's what he was, that's why he was interfering before and he, he moved it and everything flopped. And then here we have the tomato passata and um, it's just plain tomato, there's nothing in there and um, it has just a pinch of salt. So we have all of this ready before we get going. And then here we have mozzarella. Now, this is not um, mozzarella that's normal for pizza. They usually have a pizza mozzarella that has less water in it. This is the fresh mozzarella. Sometimes they do fresh ones with fresh tomatoes and basil. That's a caprese pizza. Um, but it has a bit more water in it, so you just put a bit less on top of the pizza. And this is what these um, mozzarellas look like. They're in the water, okay? So just to give you an idea, you want to put that in the fridge, please, Steffi. So you, have, you prepare all your toppings. You could also have sausage, and you pull the sausage out of its sack and have it there ready to go and put little bits of sausage on. You can have ham. You can have, um, you know, artichokes. Uh, what other sorts of things go on top of pizza here, Steffi? You could do a margarita. You could have basil. It's not basil season, so anchovies. we don't have any basil. Anchovies, um, capers, all that sort of stuff. So... You've got to think about, um, oh, sometimes we put um, thinly sliced zucchini as well, but we didn't have any of those. So Steph's going to show you how he um, um, sort of rolls out the pizza. He usually does it quite a lot by hand um, because it, if you, when he rolls it out with the rolling pin, it, go, it goes too thin and then it makes, when, when it cooks, it's very hard. So just watch the action here. We, what, are we, what are we doing, Steffi? We need sort of yeah. pulling it out. It's you have to pull it out without squashing too much. Because you don't want to push the air out of it too much. So what, oh, you, did you prepare this already? Yeah. So then you need, um, you'll also need your baking paper, carta da forno, and you, you pull out your baking paper, cut the piece. About, uh, we're only cooking it in a little oven, so Sorry guys, we're not professionals as you know. Um, so basically you do your um, baking paper the size of your baking tray, more or less. Okay. And it will, are you gonna do a little bit of rolling pin? Yeah, if you have a bit, the pin, you know, is helping you to... to. But don't push too hard. You don't yeah. want it to go thin um, because then it might be too too crunchy. Okay. And so then Steph puts it on here. And you can actually prepare these. Um, you know, you can prepare a few at a time. So what we do is we prepare all our bases and then we get rid of the, you know, the, our big wooden thing because then we can eat here at the table. Okay. Not too thin, Steffi. Okay. So, um, 
And then you don't dress it yet. What we do is we put it on. I don't want them to see my baking tray, how gross it is. So let's bring, bring it over. We'll put it on that baking you tray. Should I any up? No, we can't. We've done that before and we couldn't lift it. Do you remember? Okay. So if, if you just um, come the around here. Give it come around the telephone. Don't knock it. Okay, guys, we're going off screen for a second and then we'll come back. We just got to cover the bodgy baking tray that needs to be replaced. Okay, so then we'll come over and then I usually am the one that likes to dress the pizzas. Do you need to extend that out a little bit? Okay, so it fits in our, our bodgy baking tray that needs a, a replace. Okay, now this is very important. We take out tomato sauce. And it took us quite a few years to figure this out. So you put your tomato sauce on there, but you don't put too much. So I start smooshing it around. We like smooshing, it's like smooshing glue. Okay, see how much we've got here. Just a bit everywhere. I know it doesn't look like very much, but you don't want too much. A little bit more there. Just extend it everywhere. Okay, so that's enough of that. And then we put our veggies. You can help me do this, Steffi. So we've got our veggies here. So I'll, I'll lay out a little bit of um, eggplant here and there, and then Steph will lay out, well, he's just holding the plate. I'll lay it out. Okay, so a bit of eggplant. We need some capsicum. Um, just hold your horses with the fresh tomatoes, do you? Because Lulu won't eat them, so we have to put them. That's the thing. You have these difficult children that won't eat everything, and you have to um, only put things on one side. Okay, I'll start putting the onion. I mean, of course, you don't have to do this topping. This is the topping that we like. And sometimes when we've got more variety of things, we um, will put other things, do other types as well. But this is all our favourite, isn't it, Steph? Okay, so we go like this. Put the onion everywhere, and then olives. And now, at this point, we are, we're going to put a little bit of salt, so a pinch of salt, I'll just get the salt. So I sprinkle a pinch of, pinch of salt everywhere. Just a pinch. You don't want it to be insipid. Brings out the flavour, just a little bit. Okay, and then I get a little bit of olive oil. There's none left in my one that has the thing. I have to be very careful here. So I put my my thumb over there because it's, it's well, you do it, Steffi, I'm gonna make a mess. So you put your thumb over, otherwise too much olive oil comes out and just dribble a little bit of olive oil over. And then no cheese and no hot salami is going on at this point. Okay, what we discovered, if you put the cheese on too early, it actually um, burns and the pizza doesn't cook properly. So what we do is we put it in the oven. For how long do you think do we put it in the oven, Steve? 15 minutes. About 15 minutes in the oven, especially the first one. You might find the next pizzas yeah, maybe. maybe come out a bit sooner because they start to cook faster. So we're going to put this in the oven and then we will come back. So step, we're back. It's been about 15 minutes. Um, we've rolled out the rest of the other three doughs and this is what the pizza is looking like, okay? It's been cooking for about 15 minutes. So now uh, we put first some hot salami here and there because you don't want this to overcook either. So you just put a bit here and there so when you cut it that every piece gets a little bit of hot salami but we want it to last for all the pizzas as well. We don't want to run out, okay? And then we get the cheese and I'll just come over here and just sprinkle it here and there. You don't need to cover it. I'm a bit um, funny about the cheese. I like the cheese every bit, but Steffi gets angry with me because um, especially this cheese, um, water. it makes water. So it makes your pizza soggy. So you don't want that to happen. And it actually, you've got to have faith. It does extend a little bit. But if you like a really cheesy pizza, you'll put a put a bit more, but not this, the, the more dry um, moz, uh, pizza mozzarella is what I want to say. But I like to make sure you get a little bit everywhere. 
a little bit. You see, he's, 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 he wants to take it away. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. One there, one there. It's better in the, in the sides. But I like it. What do you mean on the sides? Oh, there. I've got too much there. Okay. See, this is, this is what we fight about. Where to put the cheese. Okay. So that's it. That's going to go back in the oven for? For another 15 minutes. Another, about. about another 15 minutes. But you have to check it out that it's cooked underneath. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that when we take it out. So it's going back in the oven for another 15 minutes and we've already prepared another one ready to go. So what you do is you prepare one, uh, you have one in the oven and one ready to go um, when that one comes out. And then we've prepared our other doughs, but we don't dress those until we get them onto the tray. Okay, so we'll be back soon. Okay, we're back. Bye. It's been about, how long do you think, Steph? 15. Maybe 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. So this is what the pizza looks like. But we showed the bottom. Um, so you can see it's all nice and very light color around the edge. It's like a light um, sort of a crude tanny sort of color. Um, you, and you wouldn't want the cheese to cook more than that, would you? No. So you have to check underneath the pasta. Oh, I can't. Any meat oh, well. I'm going to move you guys. You'll probably feel sick. Just a sec. I'll go as slowly as possible. And we'll see if you can see underneath. See underneath, it's just slightly tan. Okay, now the reason why we're showing you that is because you don't want to eat raw pizza because it'll upset your tummy, make you feel sick. Okay, so that, that is the pizza ready. You should let it sit for five minutes and then we just cut it up. So um, Steph might cut it up straight away. Oh, I better put the other one in. Now, just as a disclaimer before we go and enjoy our pizza, is our next pizza here is ready and it's on the baking tray so because we don't have another um on the baking rack i should say um we don't have another baking tray because we haven't found one the right size for our little oven but um if you do it on the baking tray it will pro a baking rack 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 um it will it will um it will cook a little bit faster won't it step yeah so um yeah so it'll cook a little bit faster so just be aware of that. So you've got to keep an eye on it. That one's going in the oven. And that is our pizza how-to. Right, Steffi? Yeah. And so let us know how how you go um, when if you give it a go. We've all got time. We're all at home. We've got plenty of time for making pizza. Now, just also one other thing before we go. Because we froze this dough, we actually froze it because we didn't have any mozzarella to um, cook it. And I know some people do meal prep. And so maybe on a Sunday, because a lot of you um, work, not at the moment because we're all at home, but um, a lot of you work, so you might want to meal prep on Sunday. So if you do freeze it, it's probably not ideal then if you have too many pizzas to then go and freeze them. You have to think about that, right? You can't refreeze things. It's dangerous mm -hmm. for bacterias and stuff. So, um, yeah, you want to be mindful of that. If you make too many pizzas for however many people there are, then um, and you're frozen the dough, then you can't then freeze the cooked pizza. Well, I don't think so anyway. You might have to look that one up, but I wouldn't do that anyway. So, if we I and mean, we we're not going to eat four pizzas, um, but we'll put it in the fridge and Lulu will eat it tomorrow, or maybe we'll all have a slice tomorrow. Mm -hmm. For lunch or an aperitivo or something like that oh and we're going to enjoy our pizza with is this the empty one uh, yeah this is the full one we're going to enjoy our pizza with this this wine here we're treating ourselves very well in lockdown amarone della voli uh, no i can't say it amarone della val policella yeah. so where's that from that's amarone. from piemonte piemonte okay near torino so that's what we're drinking with our pizza. Some people like to drink beer, we like to drink wine. So let us know how your pizza goes and um, and if it works out for you. Steph's made this pizza recipe even in Australia. Um, at Harris Farms, you can get um, the good Italian uh, flour and uh, apparently they have fresh yeast, but they didn't have it when we were there. We, we weren't 100% sure if they actually understood what we said, but. Um, you can use the dry yeast, just use 10 grams of the dry yeast. And you can get everything else pretty much around the world, I think. And Steph has made the pizza in Australia and it's very yummy. So it does work in other countries. 
Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So enjoy your pizza and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.